Hello friends, it's Miss Kristen with the Canberra County Library. This week I'm going to read The Mitten and I'm excited to tell you that the library has a holiday house in Central Park in Johnstown decorated all up to remind us of the story The Mitten. You can take a walk with your family and friends and see all the houses in Central Park and make sure to stop by and see our house that goes along with the story the mitten. But first, it's sign time. Let's learn some fun new signs that have to do with our theme of the story, the mitten. The first sign we'll learn is the word for mitten. So if you're helping your preschooler put on their mittens during the cold weather when you need to be bundled up in your sweaters, you can show them their mittens and then give them the sign for mitten at the same time. All your fingers together and your thumb straight up in the air. Bing! And then with your other hand, trace the fingers and trace the thumb. This is the sign for mitten. Mitten. And if you keep showing your young one the sign for mitten while they're putting on their mittens, they'll learn it very quickly. That was a good one. Now let's learn the sign for snow. In mitten weather, you often see snow. Can you put all your fingers out flat and wiggle them? Great job! Let's make our fingers start up high and wiggle down softly with our nice flat hands. That's the sign for snow. Wow, you're great at that sign. High five! Now when it's snowing, it's usually cold outside. Can you bring your arms in close and make two fists and give a little shake like you're feeling cold? That's the sign for cold. Very good. That's a really good job. I can see you shivering like you're cold. Sometimes if it's cold outside and we put on our mittens, we can go out and play. The sign for play is a pinky up and a thumb up and you shake it back and forth. I like to think of it as a seesaw. You play on a seesaw in a playground. This is a sign for play. Play in the snow. Wow, you're getting so good at sign language. I'm so proud of you. Here's a fun little song about a mitten. You guessed it. Maybe your grown-up can sing this song to you. I know when I was little, my grown-up sang this song to me. It goes like this. Thumb in the thumb hole. Bing! Fingers all together. This is the song that we sing in mitten weather. When you're putting on your mittens, you don't want to spread your fingers out wide. You keep them together and sing this song. Thumb in the thumb hole, fingers all together. This is the song that we sing in mitten weather. You're great singers. In this week's story time, I'm going to read you the story called The Mitten. And it's a fun story about a regular size mitten that can fit all of these animals inside of it. Do you think that could really happen? You do? You don't think that could happen? Well, anything can happen in a made-up story. I hope you can look for all of these animals in the story that I'm going to read to you now called The Mitten. And after, we can try to make a mitten craft together. That sounds like so much fun. I'll see you then. The Mitten by Jan Brett. Once there was a boy named Nicky who wanted his new mittens made from wool as white as snow. At first, his grandmother, Baba, didn't want to knit white mittens. If you drop one in the snow, she warned, you'll never find it. But Nicky wanted snow white mittens and finally Bubba made them. After she finished, she said, when you come home, 
First I will look to see if you are safe and sound, but then I will look to see if you still have your snow white mittens. So off Nicky went, and it wasn't long until one of his new mittens dropped in the snow and was left behind. A mole, tired from tunneling along, discovered the mitten and burrowed inside it. It was cozy and warm and just the right size, so he decided to stay. A snowshoe rabbit came hopping by. He stopped for a moment to admire his winter coat. It was then that he saw the mitten and he wiggled in feet first. The mole didn't think there was room for both of them, but when he saw the rabbit's big kickers, he moved over. Next, a hedgehog came snuffling along. Having spent the day looking under wet leaves for things to eat, he decided to move into the mitten and warm himself. The mole and the rabbit were bumped and jostled, but not being ones to argue with someone covered with prickles, they made room. As soon as the hedgehog disappeared into the mitten, a big owl, attracted by the commotion, swooped down. When he decided to move in also, the mole, the rabbit, and the hedgehog grumbled. But when they saw the owl's glinty talons, they quickly let him in. Up through the snow appeared a badger. He eyed the mitten and began to climb in. The mole, the rabbit, the hedgehog, and the owl were not pleased. There was no room left. But when they saw his diggers, they gave him the thumb. It started snowing, but the animals were snug in the mitten. A waft of warm steam rose in the air, and a fox trotting by stopped to investigate. Just the sight of the cozy mitten made him feel drowsy. The fox poked his muzzle in. When the mole, the rabbit, the hedgehog, the owl, and the badger saw his shiny teeth, they gave the fox lots of room. A great bear lumbered by. He spied the mitten all plumped up. Not being one to be left out in the cold, he began to nose his way in. The animals were packed in as tightly as they could be, but what animal would argue with a bear? The mitten swelled and stretched. It was pulled and bulged to many times its size, but Bubba's good knitting held fast. Along came a meadow mouse, no bigger than an acorn. She wriggled into the one space left and made herself comfortable. Right atop of the great bear's nose. The bear, tickled by the mouse's whiskers, gave an enormous sneeze. Ah, 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 choo! The force of the sneeze shot the mitten up into the sky and scattered the animals in all directions. On his way home, Nicky saw a white shape in the distance. It was the lost mitten silhouetted against the blue sky. As he ran to catch his snow white mitten, he saw Bubba's face in the window. First she looked to see if he was safe and sound, and then she saw that he still had his new mittens. The End It's craft time. Are you ready to make a fun mitten craft with me? All you have to do is get out a piece of construction paper and cut out the shape of a mitten. If you'd like, you can put your hand on the paper and trace your hand and cut out on the line and that will make a mitten that will fit your hand perfectly. Or maybe you already have something like this in your bag from the library. Either way, this is what we start with our craft. If you'd like, you can take a little bit of glue and put it along the bottom of the mitten. And if you have a cotton ball, you can pull the cotton ball apart. This is the fun part for little fingers to do. And the cotton ball gets stuck right to the glue at the bottom. You can stop there or you can decorate your mitten with your name or polka dots or anything that you like. How about Kristen? That's my name. I like it. When you're done, 
You'll have a fun mitten. You can make one or you can make two. You can hang it on your fridge or use it as a bookmarker when you're reading your favorite stories from the Cambry County Library. That was a fun craft. I'm so glad you could join me for craft time this week. That was such a nice story. And did you enjoy making that mitten craft? Oh, I'm glad. Don't forget to go to downtown Johnstown Central Park and look for the Canberra County Library's Holiday House, all decorated to match our story, The Mitten. Maybe I'll see you there. Goodbye, friends. It's time to say goodbye. And I'll see you all next time.